Hello and welcome to this new series of tutorials. What we're going to do is uh, teach you about uh, VFX materials for beginners, right? So we are going to go through every single step uh, to, to see what makes materials work. And uh, I do this because when I was learning, I will watch many tutorials and um, the materials that the instructors made were really complex and they were awesome. They, they look incredible, but I couldn't really understand why they worked. Even now on really complex materials, I just can't understand why this or that happens, right? Um, and I understand also that sometimes you just need to memorize uh, certain combinations to make uh, certain looks. And that's good, but it helps me more to really understand what's going on, right? Instead of just memorizing. So that's where, that's what we're gonna try to make here. We're gonna try to over explain or explain in detail what is going on for every single thing that we're doing. And if I miss everything, please let me know, right? And I'll just improve upon that. So let's start, right? Um, we're gonna make this sphere and it, it is not uh, it is not complex, but it does teach us uh, it does teach us a few useful tricks for later on materials. So it is composed of four elements. First, it is an opaque core. Then, second, it is a reflective a reflective material. The other one is a wispy kind material inside this core. And last, it is a BFX. Uh, uh, it's a BFX material going in circles around, rotating, giving it a wispy, wavy look. So let's start. Let's go. I created a new folder. Right click material, M underscore core. That's the name for uh, this lesson's material. So, uh, hold on. Okay, so as soon as we start with this, at the left side we have our material properties. And there are plenty. You don't need to learn to learn them all at the same time or, or all in one go. The most important thing that you need to learn that you're going to use often, it is the blend mode and the shading model. So the blend mode is uh, it just determines how the material's color is blended with the background colors. And this is going to be more clear for you as we go on. So if you choose the blend mode, again, that determines the color, uh, how the color is blended with the background. If you choose opaque, your material won't let any kind of light go through it. It is never going to be transparent. If you choose translucent, it is going to be transparent, light can go through it, and same as additive. For VFX, you're going to be using translucent and additive a lot, and sometimes opaque too. These three mostly. Alright. So the way that translucent and additive and additive work is that they take black pixels uh, and they uh, and they make them transparent, right? So uh, all of the pixels are still being rendered, just uh, render it, just that the black pixels they're taken as this is transparent, right? And the, the difference between translucent and additive is that it's just that additive is cheaper. So for this one, for the core, we needed to we need it to be opaque, right? We don't want light to go through it. We do not want it to be transparent. So we're just going to leave it on opaque. And then you have the shading model. And again, the shading model, it determines how the inputs that you've created uh, define the, mat the materials and color. All right. And again, this is going to be made even more clear as you go through. So for VFX, you will mostly just use these two, unlit and default lit. Default lit is going to interact with light, 
with light sources and unlit does not so we just choose unlit unlit for this for this example okay so now also you have two sided and this is also useful so according to this well it, it is fairly straightforward right if you want your material to be seen from both angles uh, from from both sides for example over here you have a uh, previews for your material if you want to preview it as a sphere or, or, or as a plane let's just preview it as a plane if you turn it around you don't see it right so you just press two sided yeah it is very simple but for this we do not want it to be two sided and it's going to be made even more clear to you as we go as we go on because we'll also need to create meshes and everything will be better explained there so first uh, again we want to make uh, an opaque core that has some kind of uh, of of fake glow to it all right so let's just hold three and press left uh, and press left click this allows us to bring a, a vector tree constant we could use these to uh, uh, to sign directions on our material or just to put color and for now it is just color right so um, maybe something like this could be yeah then we need to press and hold m and left click this brings the multiply node and this allows us to combine two materials oh well no no <laughs> this allows us to combine two nodes okay so let's just hook this up and i'm just moving it with my left click right and uh so just to test it if you hook it on emissive color you can see our color here showing on the left side preview window but let's say that you don't really want to come here and modify the intensity every single time all right so hold s and left click and you bring a constant parameter let's just name this color intensity okay and let's hook this up so this is a, a one parameter if you hold one on the left click you're making the same but this one is a parameter on this one you can put a name and then you can hook it and then you can hook it on a on a material instance that i'll show you after so this one these two are the same just that if you right click this and just put convert to parameter you just suddenly create it the same right sometimes you just want to hold one and do this and just modify anything or more often than not you want to hold s and just type this right it will all make sense once I show you how to make the, the material instance. So next, um, next, next, let's make some kind of Fresnel to it. All right. So we need some kind of, uh, how do you say the uh, aura on the outside? Some kind of it's not hail right now i don't think so okay so just right click and type press now and if we hook this or actually you don't need to hook it to preview it you can just right click and press enable real-time preview oh no, no sorry start previewing node yeah you can see what fresnel does to our material right it is just straightforward it, it creates this sort of uh glow right so just again right click disable real time oh come on what am i doing real time enable is fine we just need to stop the node there we go and we need to combine these two so just as we did before we hold m left click 
and then we have this multiply and then we hook it over here right we're just combining these two elements and now we will want to have a or actually I think this is a good time to show you why I choose this one to be a parameter because again I could have just hold one and left click and hook this and just put a value right so oh you can already see how the Fresnel is working right but if I have this on zero we have no color because the color is being multiplied by zero so it's nothing right it's just black Oh, and just to show you, remember that this material is opaque, right? So it this does uh, render black. If you put it on translucent, since it's black. Wait, what? Did I just screw myself over? Hold on. Mm, opacity. There we go. I got scared for a second because I... Did I contradict myself? No. Okay. So yeah, if this is translucent, um, the translucent and the additive uh, blend modes need a, need an opacity. Right? You could have a, a crazy emissive color or maybe a, a texture here, right? That it's just... Uh, I'll show you right now. Just something quick. Uh, let me bring two textures here. Anything, honestly. Okay, so this. Okay, this is a. Uh, okay, it's it's weather texture, okay. But what will let what will determine how the outline looks? is the opacity right so if you hook this over here you can see that it is only rendering what is shown here right that's just a quick explanation so if we go back to opaque you see that opaque has no opacity right because it, it can be transparent all right so back to what we were doing we just hook this on the on emissive color and it is not showing anything because the color is being multiplied by zero. So if I uh, make this a parameter and I say color intensity, I can just click on apply. You see that it is black, right? We go back to our content browser. And if you right click and select create material instance and go inside it, you will see that now you can modify your parameter here, color intensity. You can just modify it on the fly. And the reason that people do this is because materials are often very complex, all right? And you, uh, the more complex, the, the slower it gets to work on it. So if you just want to modify your, your material, you're just going to have to go back to this parameter, change it, then click apply, and you waste a lot of time, right? It is that and also because with these parameters, you can just zoom on, zoom on this to blueprint, right? So, so yes, that's why you, you need these kind of parameters. It is good that you start uh, getting used to them. Right again, so you just can modify them like this. It's really easy to do it, to do it that way. But for now, for now, just to see what is happening on the editor right now, let's just say that this has a default value of two. No, maybe one. Okay, yeah, one. All right, now we will want to control the Fresnel attributes. And we can do it over here, right? Just clicking it. And modifying over here but it is the same thing as the color intensity you're going to be wasting a lot of time entering and modifying it and you also cannot summon it so what do you do it is the same hold s bring this parameter 
this parameter is going to modify exponent. So Fresnel Fresnel exponent, and we hook it. And now we uh, now we hook the the refraction parameter. So again, S Fresnel ref, and we hook it. There we go. Right now, both are on zero. And let's do zero here too. This is everything we need for our opaque material for the core. Just click apply. And we go back to our instance. We check this. And color intensity, let's say that it is one. Fine. Now we need to play around these two. Often with the exponent, if you go higher than one, it's going to get tighter and tighter, right? We just want some kind of faint glow. We don't want much really. So maybe eight or seven works. And for the Fresnel reference, you need to put really low values. If you put one, the Fresnel just breaks, right? If you start going below one, it's going to get progressively better. More than one, it just breaks it, right? Because you might as well have nothing and just create a, 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 a tighter uh, color there. So we need to go below zero. So 0.1, uh, I'm sorry, below zero, below one, maybe 0 0.01, mm, maybe like that works. It needs to be something really faint. Yeah, I'm liking this, maybe. This is looking nice. This is looking nice. We can of course continue modifying it, right? But for now, I honestly feel like this intensity is just what we need. It is just what we need. So again, just to summarize, your material is opaque because you want it to be, uh, uh, you don't want light to go through it. You need to emulate uh, some kind of a solid core. You want it to be unlit because you don't want it uh, emitting light. Then we set up one color and we multiply it by a variable. And we did this because in this way we can just control it easier. Right? Because, um, well, yeah, I, I, I think it, it is pretty clear now, but um, then we multiply this by a Fresnel. And what the Fresnel does is it makes this, uh, oh, well, it's on zero, so it won't really show here. But you remember, right? It, it makes this, this halo. Um, we put two, two parameters here too, to be able to modify it on, on the material instance. And we multiply them together. This is a really simple material for the core. We click apply, of course that we need to save. And uh, for the next uh, lesson, we are either going to make a transparent material which is it's not going to be really complex, but you will learn about reflections and, and other things. And after that, we'll just go to to the wispy effect, right? Which is going to use uh, UV distortion and, and, and other things. So this is it for now. Thank you for joining me. I hope that you learned. If you have any kind of a suggestion, just let me know. And that's it. Thank you so much.